Hey guys, it's tough. Um, we're gonna be going over the new firmware. Um, it's gonna be short and long, so I'll do the short, nitty gritty, to the point talk first. So those of you who just want to do it can do it without listening to me ramble on about uh, this mess of code. And uh, those of you who care about the details can stick around and listen to me ramble because I'll ramble. Um, I've made some changes primarily to solve a few problems. One is the um, the walk, the digital, the 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 digital keyboard mode had some um, offset issues where it was too sensitive. So like. I had people tell me that they would use it on, like, say, Fortnite, and uh, they would, you know, be in digital mode and sending keystrokes via the joystick, and just moving forward would also slightly trigger the left and right, and it was just too sensitive. So I've I've increased the default uh, dead zone value for walk mode, so that's it's less sensitive, and you're less likely to send spurious inputs. So that's uh, that's one of the changes. Um, another one of the big changes was kind of refactoring a lot of the um, the global variables such that they are as small as um, they're no larger than they actually need to be. Um, I was starting to run into firmware size problems and memory problems because the LC is a lot more limited compared to the, like the TNC 3.2 in terms of firmware size and in terms of like uh, how much memory it has available. So I had to get a little more... Uh, um, intentional I'll say about a lot of my globals especially so those have been refactored that's a lot better um, and then the big the big change is now we're using EEPROM to um, store the inner and outer bounds calibration uh, the lower and upper bounds calibration for the X and Y axis so um, the flashing is the same we'll go through that real quick um, you get my code from GitHub. You install the uh, IDE. Uh, the The previous tar uh, Tartarus video where all that's set up is still very relevant. Um, the flashing process is, is exactly the same. Um, in fact, you can use this probably on other devices. Um, it's a pretty generic joystick firmware um, that's only joystick aware. But make sure, since we're doing this on the TNCLC, that Teen CLC is selected as your board. USB type is, um, it could work with keyboard, mouse, and joystick. I like to program it with serial keyboard, mouse, and joystick just on the off chance I ever get around to writing the um, Windows application profile manager that I've been, I've had in the back of my head for a while now. Um, yeah, that way I can distribute it and people will be able to do it, but whatever. And then, uh, you know, you just hit upload, and that's really it. Um, there's defaults in here, so just uploading um, as long as you've soldered to the correct analog pins, it should just work. Um, you might have to swap those, um, but yeah, you should be fine. Um, the big change that you need to be worried about is you no longer have to do mess with those. Those functions you used to have to uncomment them flash, rotate the stick with notepad open, capture the values, copy and paste them into pound defines up here. You don't have to do that anymore. Uh, we're doing auto calibration now for the um, upper and lower bounds where uh, it's, and then those values are stored in EEPROM for each boot. EEPROM is the general term for embedded systems that's like it's non-volatile storage. So imagine you've got a tiny SSD on board that's exactly what it is. The Teen CLC's got like 128 bytes of non-volatile storage, so that's that's ample for what we need. We're using four bytes, I think, total. There's four values. No, we're using eight bytes. Okay, so yeah, we're using eight bytes out of the 128 bytes, so we've got plenty of space. Um, and all you really do to calibrate it, you got to do it at least once, um, preferably when it's installed. And, uh, you know, the stick's not going to move. Um, the I'll just talk through the sequence really quick. Uh, the boot sequence, you plug the Teensy in, the LED goes solid for five seconds. That's dead zone calibration. Don't touch the stick. The stick needs to be centered. 
Um, it's calibrating what uh, what natural zero what natural center is. It's since those are analog devices, it's never actually zero, or in our case five twelve is center. It's never actually true center. So we have to know what the analog offsets are. So we're auto calibrating dead zone for that first five seconds of the solid L, uh, LED, and then it will blink for five seconds, and that is the input window. Um, if you've used this firmware previously, you'll know that that is your window of time to move the stick along the y-axis or press it in. Up or down on the y-axis gets you walk or sprint digital mode, pushing, it, pushing the stick in. The joystick button gives you uh, just kind of standard digital, digital mode where it will um, output keystrokes instead of analog stick values. That's for games that don't like joystick, uh, don't like analog sticks. Really just want a keyboard, so it's kind of... That's kind of a hybrid mode where you still get to use an analog stick mechanically with your thumb, but the game sees a keyboard. Eh, it is what it is. A PC is hard, yo. Um, and then, so now I've got new detect code, uh, code detection working on the x-axis. So you can move it left or right on the x-axis during that blink window, five seconds of LED blink. And it will go into one of the EEPROM calibration modes. If you move it left, you get kind of EEPROM clear where it nukes the stored values. And that's in case you're having problems and you just kind of need to reset it. Um, put it'll put it back to defaults. And then you've got, um, uh, if you move it right on the, on the x-axis, you get uh, calibration mode for the uh, um, upper lower bounds. And uh, you have a five second window of the LED being solid, and that's your opportunity to rotate the stick as far as it will go. And the code is keeping track of each rotation and what the highest and lowest values are for each axis, and then when it's done, it will store those values in EEPROM permanently for you forever, unless you clear them. And then for each sub subsequent boot, each time you plug the thing in, it'll read those out, and so that's where it's getting the values from. So if, you've, if you notice that, um, over time, after use, it's uh, it's not behaving as well as you expect it to. It's not when you peg the stick; it's not actually pegging the stick for you like you want. You probably need to re go calibrate because we are dealing with analog potentiometers under your thumb that do develop wear and travel over time, and and those values are likely to change after some weeks or months or years of use. So I'm I'm trying to bake as much independence into this for you as, as possible, and that's and that's it. For those of you who want to know how to how to use it and flash it, um, the the new feature, that's it. You can walk away and take it from here. For those of you who want to know details, stick around. We'll go over it. Um, uh, the first thing to notice is that the 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 pound defines for the upper and lower bound are gone, because now we're pulling them out of EEPROM. They are now globals. We set those in set bounds here in the setup function. It is reading it out of EEPROM. I've got some handy functions for you. This is fun. This was fun to figure out. I always forget this. On the y-axis, for some reason, the software has the values flipped. I'm guessing that's a holdover from direct or maybe even X input. Or no, this is all direct input. So direct input days where the axis was flipped for some reason. I don't know why, but it is what it is. So, um, and it's using these functions to read it. So if you are handy and you want to modify this code, I've got some handy functions that will read the values for you. Um, and it's setting that on the globals on boot. Um, let's go look at detect startup flags. That is what looks for the X and Y axis movement during boot. Uh, here we go. So yeah, originally we had stuff on the Y axis. That was um, looking for digital mode. Um, as well as the button press. Now we've got x-axis code that um, is doing EEPROM stuff. So if you move it left, that's left. The math says that's left. Um, it'll clear the bounds from the EEPROM. 
Where's that code? I'll show you that code. Yeah, I need to update that, I think. Make those some more sane defaults is really what that is. I'll do that. This is still beta. And if you move it right, the math says that's right. Save bounds. You get into this guy. And um, we are doing this for five seconds. We get raw values. We keep track of what's high and low for each axis, and then we write those guys off to the EEPROM. And that code is somewhere. Where is that code? Update, update, here we go. Update, again, I wrapped it in a handy function for you. And for handy function for me. And yeah, this is eight bytes, I'm pretty sure. One, two, yep, zero through seven. We're using eight bytes because I think shorts are 16 bit, which are two bytes. Is this a 16 bit processor? I think that's right. Mm. <laughs> I don't have an oscilloscope, forgive me. Uh, anyways, that's kind of the detail there. There's some more little, oh, no, no, there's more. I'll show you. This math was fun. I actually dreamt this math over Thanksgiving. I was at my sister's house and I thought, mm. Why are people seeing issues where they mechanically peg the stick, but it's not pegging it in software? I'm reading the values, what's going on. I'm even scaling them. Like this map is generating a uh, integer scaling between these two values. I'm thinking, so the math should, even if you know the, me the mechanical upper bound isn't really hitting 1023, it's probably hitting 800 and something, the math should scale it, but it's not why and derp de derp de derp i forgot that i'm subtracting the dead zone so we get a zero starting point that's been happening forever well well of course that will artificially offset my outer bound to whatever the dead zone is so i needed to add it back and so this was the other fix that we did or that i did i did um so now it's all automated. You're getting auto calibration on the bounds, and now the math is more robust for the stick uh, rotation calculation. Math is fun, y'all. <coughs> this is why I like working on teams when you're just doing this by yourself, man. You make problems for yourself. You don't even know it for months. Um, so I'm going to say this as well. I should have set it up front, but I'll say it now because I'm remembering now. I didn't remember earlier. If anybody is watching this that I've already sent an old weaver to, get in touch with me. I'll get on a Discord or Skype or Google Duo or whatever call with you, and we will flash your stick for you, all right? Um, you need this code. so Or I'll send you instructions, however, whatever you want to do. That's kind of the details. Um, if you really, really want to know all, all the details, because I'm not remembering every single little line that I changed, you can do a, a diff, just, you know, you can, I'm doing git releases, so you can go on GitHub and do a diff against the previous version and see what I changed. Um, if you want to see nasty, gnarly C code, this is not refined C, it's, it's C that I wrote to make it work because I'm doing this in my hobby time. Anyways, I think that's it. I can be done rambling now. Um... I will post in the description a link to the Tartarus video on this because uh, it had more details on actually how to flash instead of the bar. I went over that briefly at the start, but it's it's all the same. Anyways, I hope all that makes sense. Um, thanks for humoring me, and uh, hope that works for you. Catch you all later. Bye.